Hey everyone, this is Nick and I just bought this laptop, the Tuxedo Stellaris 15 Gen 4. I had already reviewed the previous iteration and while I found it really amazing, I just didn't need such a powerful laptop at the time. Turns out that now I do because I plan to be a lot more mobile and to edit on the go. And I've been using the Stellaris 15 to edit all the videos dating back to the Plasma 5.25 review and I've been loving the experience. So let me tell you why I think it's a great laptop and why I'm buying it. Let's start with a small disclaimer. Tuxedo is a sponsor of the channel, as you might already know, but they didn't get to see this review beforehand and they don't get to tell me what to do. And also buying this laptop basically gave them back all the money they ever gave me for sponsoring the channel. So either I'm an idiot or I'm unbiased. I will let you pick which. So let's begin with the build quality. And this thick boy is built like a tank. It's made of matte black aluminium with the back plate being made out of plastic. It's 15.6 inches and it's 2.6 centimeters thick at a total weight of 2.2 kilograms, which means it's definitely not an ultrabook or an ultra portable laptop. It's designed as a desktop replacement that can also be carried around. The chassis is super rigid without any hint of deck flex, either in the middle of the keyboard, the palm rests or the top grille. It's an extremely sturdy device and you can feel it when moving it around. It doesn't flex, creak or bend at all. In terms of branding, it's also super limited. You get the tuxedo logo on the back and that's it. Well, mine got my own logo because that's something you can configure from Tuxedo. So you can get any graphics of your choice laser etched to the backplate. I think my logo looks absolutely amazing in these shades of glossy and matte black, but I am not very objective. You can, of course, open up the device very easily with a few screws and upgrade the RAM and the storage up to 64 gigabytes of RAM and you have two NVMe slots for SSDs. The screen isn't covered in glass, which is probably a good idea to keep the weight manageable and it limits reflections. And while the bezels around the display are pretty big, especially the bottom one, they do house a pretty decent webcam that I'll talk about a bit later. This laptop just feels very good and very solid. It might not be very thin, but it has a tapered profile in the front that makes it look a bit slimmer than it actually is. And it has a nice sturdy hinge that you can still open with one finger. It's a tank basically, but it's a very elegant tank. In terms of hardware, let's start with the display. It's a 1440p screen at 2560 by 1440 with a 16 by nine ratio. People might lament the lack of 16 by 10, but for video editing and working with two windows side by side, I actually prefer 16 by nine. It's a 240 Hertz refresh rate panel, which is pretty cool for gaming, which this thing can absolutely do. And it's matte and anti-reflective, which is also really good. As a matter of fact, I never noticed any reflections while using it in brightly lit rooms. It's not the brightest panel though at 350 nits, but it does support 95% of sRGB. Color accuracy felt good, at least compared to the ultra wide I use at home, I couldn't see much difference and editing videos on it never felt like the colors were off. It's a good display, although the resolution is a bit of a problem for me. 1440p on a 15 inch screen is too small for me, so you will need fractional scaling. On top of the display, you get a decent webcam, a 1080p one in fact. It's still not amazing in terms of colors and how it handles lighting, but it's a nice step up from the basic 720p webcams that are often seen on most laptops these days. The microphone is decent, although it does pick up your keyboard sounds and the fan noise. Nothing horrible, but not extremely well tuned either. I feel like I say this for every laptop review, but really there needs to be a standard way to mask out the sounds of the keyboard and the sounds of the fan. Whether it's hardware or software, I do not care, but those sounds should not be audible on the internal mic. We are in an age where everybody works remotely and uses those microphones. They need to get better. On to the keyboard. And it's the best keyboard I ever used on the laptop. Simple as that. I already loved the previous iteration on the Gen 3, 
And this one doesn't feel different. Maybe the keys are just a tiny bit easier to press, offering less resistance. It's optomechanical, which means the actuation is triggered by a contact cutting off a light switch. In practice, it has really nice key travel, great key stability, the actuation happens even if you only hit the side of a key, and the sound is clicky and very nice to hear. I typed most of that review on the Stellaris 15 next to a friend that was reading, and they never complained once. So they might just have been too polite or too afraid of my bulging muscles, but it's probably just that the sound is really nice to hear. It's also backlit with individual LEDs per key, which means you can do some crazy RGB things with it. Although Tuxedo doesn't offer a software way to control that for now. Slimbook has one, but their software isn't yet compatible with Ubuntu 22.04 or more modern distros. The touchpad is nice, if not incredible. It's smooth and it feels good for gestures, but it's a bit small for this size of laptop. The click feels solid, even though it's a clickboard style touchpad, so you can only really click it in the bottom half. I would have liked it to be a bit bigger and centered. Please center your touchpads in the middle of the palm rests, especially when you have a small divot to help you lift the screen. It just feels off center. And I know this laptop uses a standard Tong Feng design, but please Tuxedo, pass on that feedback. Touchpads need to be centered. Onto the speakers and they're decent. They don't sound incredible, but they get pretty loud without distortion, without sounding tinny and echoey. They won't rock your socks off, but they aren't bad. Finally, the I.O. And this laptop has it all. On the left side, you get a full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, a mic jack and an audio jack, plus that Kensington lock to make sure that no one steals your laptop. On the right, you have a full-size SD card reader and two USB-A 3.2 Gen 1. I'm really glad they included an SD card reader on the laptop. It made transferring all the files from the camera to the laptop for editing a lot easier than using that horrendous dongle that I have that also blocks other ports. Finally, on the back, you have a Thunderbolt 4 port, an HDMI 2.0 port, a gigabit Ethernet jack, and the barrel charger. And what is that weird flap, you're going to ask? Well, it's the connectors for the Tuxedo Aquarius system. And what is that, you're also going to eagerly ask? It's a water cooling system that you can plug into your Stellaris 15 to actually freaking water cool your laptop externally for when you need the absolute best performance. Now, the drivers only exist for Windows for now, but Tuxedo are hard at work writing them for Linux, which is really cool. So when they're done, I'll definitely ask for a review unit because that's just too fun to pass on. Now, small nitpicks, the Thunderbolt 4 port doesn't charge the laptop, which forces you to use the enormous power brick and the barrel charger. I guess the hardware is just too powerful to be charged by a regular port like that. I would also have liked a 10 gig Ethernet port instead, since it's 2022 and fast wired connections are basically everywhere. Apart from that, it will handle anything you want to plug in. Okay, now let's talk internals. CPU, GPU, that's what matters, right? Well, at, at least it matters to me. This thing has a lot of different configurations. Mine has an Intel Core i7-12700H but you can get up to an i9-12900H. The base model comes with an NVIDIA RTX 3060 mobile with 6GB of VRAM, but you can get up to a 3080 Ti, and RAM ranges from 16 to 64GB, with storage being SSD-based up to 4TB. My unit has the 3060, 16GB of RAM and 1TB of SSD, which is more than enough to get started, but I will probably upgrade the RAM to 32 gigs and probably add a second SSD just for fun. Now let's talk numbers and benchmarks. The i7-12700H is a monster. It's a 14-core, 20-thread CPU, which goes up to 4.68 gigahertz. On Geekbench 5, it scores 1815 in single-core 
and 11,588 in multi-core. It's the most powerful CPU I own out of all my devices, including my desktop Ryzen 7 5800H. It's also cooled using liquid metal and some big fans, which means that while you will definitely hear it when under heavy load, like when gaming and it can be pretty loud, you will definitely not hear it scream all the time when you're just browsing the web. In terms of graphics performance, I ran my usual Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Resident Evil 2. This laptop can handle that without any issues. At the native resolution on Ultra, Shadow of the Tomb Raider got an average of 115 FPS. If you drop these down to medium or lower the resolution, you will absolutely be able to make use of the 240Hz panel. In Resident Evil 2, you can turn everything up to the max at the native screen's resolution and still get a nice smooth 60 FPS with very rare drops. If you lower the resolution and use super sampling, you will absolutely reach higher than that. I was expecting a little better, to be honest, but that's a game running through Proton, so there might be bottlenecks I'm not aware of. If you want to fully use the 240Hz refresh rates though, you'll need to go down to 1080p, which on a 15 inch screen absolutely will still look amazing, especially at high details. It's just a very, very powerful laptop for gaming and also for other stuff. I've been editing all my videos since the Plasma 5.25 review on that device and it's been buttery smooth. I can preview the final video at its native 1080p resolution and everything just works great. And keep in mind that it's just a 3060. You can also get a 3070 or 3080 Ti, which are going to make things even better. In terms of battery life, of course it will depend on what you do. Using only the Intel graphics card, with a typical workload for me, consisting of writing on Nextcloud notes inside of Firefox, listening to music, watching the occasional YouTube video, with Wi-Fi on, Bluetooth on for the mouse, and headphones plugged in, at mid-brightness, the laptop got up to seven hours of use, thanks to the 93 watt hour battery. When using the Nvidia dedicated GPU for gaming though, if you let it run as fast as it can, you can expect something more along the lines of three to four hours. Video editing lasted about four and a half hours for me. The six performance cores and eight efficiency cores of the newer Intel CPUs mean that you can absolutely handle a full day of work on this laptop. Unless you need the dedicated GPU on all the time. But generally hybrid graphics mode is where it's going to be at for most people. And my experience with that was mediocre. The Stellaris 15 comes with Tuxedo OS 22.04. It's basically Kubuntu 22.04 with a custom theme and the Tuxedo control center installed, plus a few customizations pre-applied to ensure everything runs smoothly on the device, that all the hotkeys work as intended, that sort of stuff. I wanted to try another distro on it, and since I enjoyed using Pop! OS on the HP Dev 1, I decided to go with that. I added the Tuxedo PPAs to make sure I had everything I needed in terms of software support and installed the required tweaks for the Stellaris 15, which I must say should be provided in the products description page. Tuxedo OS does a great job of pre-installing it, but the package names inside of the PPAs are not exactly explicit to which device they apply. So having a list of which configurations you should install from the Tuxedo PPA to make things work would be a great help. Everything worked out of the box except for sound. It's not specifically related to the Stellaris 15. It seems there's an issue in supporting the latest Intel audio hardware. Pipewire was masked for some reason, and so no audio input or output was detected. It took me three hours of online search to fix the issue, but it was only one command line in the end. I left the command I used in the description for those who might need it. Apart from that, everything went great. Except that hybrid graphics mode is still a mess on Linux with Nvidia. First, you get really bad screen tearing on it, even though it's using the Intel graphics by default. You can fix that by adding the tear-free option in the x.org settings. Again, the stuff you need to add is in the description. But enabling that tear-free option causes performance issues. Everything feels less responsive, and even apps using the dedicated GPU start to stutter. So either you get horrible screen tearing or you get bad performance. I couldn't find a suitable compromise. 
which is a shame because it means that I basically use the laptop in Nvidia graphics mode all the time and only switch to Intel graphics mode, which necessitates a reboot, when I just know I'm not going to be gaming, I'm just going to be writing or watching videos. That kind of defeats the purpose of the dual GPUs. So please, Nvidia, fix your crap, make better drivers. I hope that the new open source module thingy that you opened will make things a lot better because for now, it's a mess. Now, on pure Intel or pure Nvidia modes, there is no screen tearing at all and performance is just amazing, which is good. And the rest of the software experience was pretty great. Everything works as you would expect, apart from the scaling, I needed to enable that to 125% because 100% was too small and 200% was too big. Quick reminder to all hardware manufacturers, either you ship a 1080p panel or you ship a 4K panel. Anything in the middle is just stupid for all devices except a 17 inch. 1440p on a laptop is dumb and should not be done. Now, you can quote me on this or fight me if you disagree, but my eyes will not accept 1440p and that's that. So, why did I buy this laptop? Well, because it allows me to edit videos and game on a portable form factor with great performance, sometimes higher than my desktop, and because the hardware is just really, really nice and solid. The keyboard is incredible and an absolute joy to type on. The screen is really good, apart from the stupid resolution. You get a decent webcam, which is rare enough to be mentioned, and the I.O. is just perfect for my needs. Of course, this comes at a price. My unit with the 3060 is already out of stock, and the next one with the 3070 is about 2500 euros, which is not cheap. I would say it's worth it for the incredible chassis durability, the amazing keyboard, combined with very good battery life. But whether you're ready to sink that much into a laptop will largely depend on what you intend to do with it. If you're looking for something more affordable, you can also check out all the other devices that Tuxedo offers. They have smaller Ultrabooks, Nux, they have gaming PCs, they have high-end workstations, and they have a huge variety of configurations for each and a lot of keyboard layouts. They're based in Germany, but they ship worldwide, and you can really tailor your device to your needs, and you just know that it's going to run well with Linux, because they provide distros out of the box that you can select at configuration, or you can just install your own. All of them can be opened up and upgraded. They're just really, really cool devices. So if you need a new device that you can be sure runs Linux, just head over to the link in the description below and grab a device from Tuxedo. They are really cool. So, thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications. And if you didn't like it, well, you can also dislike and tell me why in the comments. And if you have enough cash at hand to buy three or four Stellaris 15s, why not support the channel? You can use the super thanks button below or the PayPal link in the description, or you can join my Patreon subscribers and YouTube members. Both get access to a weekly podcast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thanks everyone for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!